Dear Diary, greetings. In my capacity as a worshipper of knowledge, a self-proclaimed evidentialist, my actions have been woefully inadequate. I have neither fought enough for nor talked enough of knowledge. I have perhaps even not thought enough of knowledge. Perhaps it's time I thought more and talked more, if not did more for knowledge, its friends and yes, its foes. I have talked earlier about the three levels of truth, the subjective, the objective and the absolute varieties. I have also talked about how the only real approximation to truth available to us is of the objective variety, the one that is vetted and confirmed by evidence and reason. To uncover evidence and to apply reason, however, are difficult tasks and most people leave that work to those that are driven more by truth and less by their own needs and wants. Perhaps the primary love, the primary want of such outsourcees is truth itself. It's worth recalling that the word truth as used here is synonymous with reality. To be aware of truth is to know reality. Truth is no truth unless it is reality. Knowledge, no knowledge unless it reflects it. In other words, knowledge is reality as understood by us. As seen above, very few people have serious will to knowledge. Most others are happy enough using the fruits of knowledge gained for the species by the first group. The first group of those human specimens that cannot live without understanding why what happens happens. Case in point is that there are far fewer scientists than there are engineers and those that use the products dished out by those engineers that is the consumers. Engineering after all is applied science and science merely a method of knowing a refined common sense. Thus there are two qualities that people have with respect to knowledge. They have some level of knowledge and some level of will to knowledge. Why do I have to state these qualities separately? Is in the level of knowledge a function of the will to knowledge? After all, the one that strives more achieves more. Well, not really. Knowledge is not always directly proportional to the will to knowledge. And that is what I want to share today with you, dear diary. Let us see how it is so. Let us talk a little about each of the four types of people when seen through the matrix of knowledge and will to knowledge. A disclaimer, to be very specific, we are actually talking of people situations um, and not really people in all their complexity and capability. However, people situations is a difficult mouthful so I shorten it to people. 
the people who have little will to knowledge and consequently they never take the trouble to acquire much knowledge thus remain mostly ignorant of most of what goes on around them they often predict situations wrongly and thus are at the receiving end of the products of time these can be termed as foolish people they are out of touch with reality also and more importantly they are not bothered about their being so they therefore never learn thus never improve their situation the less said about them the better this is because we are all ignorant in most matters and not bothered about improving our knowledge of those matters thus in those matters we are all foolish we however are over generalizers so if someone is to say that i was foolish in a particular matter at a particular time what i do here is that he is calling me a fool that is foolish in all matters all the time none of us likes to be called a fool so it is best that we merely note this happenstance and move on these people who have low levels of knowledge and low will to knowledge can be called foolish then there are those that do not much care about knowledge per se that is they have a low will to knowledge however they still go on to achieve a relatively high degree of knowledge in some important matter these people are important for example cardiac surgery consultants why and how does this happen how can a person learn a lot when he is not particularly orgasmic about learning per se perhaps because they are merely bothered about making a good living and getting its attendant benefits good food good wine good toys good comforts good health care good wife thus uh, they stress on their education um, schooling that is and learn a lot about their specific areas these people are obviously not foolish yet they are not particularly bothered about anything that does not give them material benefits such as money career growth or professional respect these people can be called informed what matters to them is the information that is of use to them and they spend decades schooling and keeping themselves well informed even during their later career persons then comes a category of persons that do have a high level of will to knowledge however do not actually possess a high level of knowledge how can that be who are these people these are people who do not distinguish between the various levels or kinds of truth for them their subjective truth is synonymous with uh, the other truths specifically the absolute truth these people have generally been indoctrinated in a particular ideology and they see that ideology as the absolute truth they often consider objective truth insufficient and a level lower than the absolute truth 
which of course it is. So they reject any efforts aimed at uh, bringing their ideology closer to the objective truth. They are of course right in rejecting the objective truth in favor of the absolute truth for the objective truth is compromised by its observed capabilities which to say the least are extremely limited for the human species indeed likely so for any life form at least of the kind that we can imagine. They, this third category of people that we are discussing are however dead wrong. Why? Because no subjective truth can ever be synonymous with the absolute truth. What we can know is merely a reflection of what we observe through our sense organs and their extensions and conclude through our minds and their extensions and subjective truth is not even that it is merely a belief by definition not the absolute truth even if their subjective truth is truer other than mere belief it is still an image and no image can ever be the real thing uh, which Romeo will be happy enough marrying his Juliet's photograph most subjective truths are in fact much worse images of reality than a photograph is of a person. Those are ideologies which are more often than not hobbled by the abilities of their ideologue. And ideologues are generally speaking idiots. For if they were not so they would have focused on knowing reality rather than seeking to impose their image mental image on the reality their ideology you know which is an image on the real thing it is like asking Juliet to go 2D uh, so that she can look exactly like her lovely photograph and the disciples of these idiots uh, create dogmas that get more and more ossified with passing generations as do their brains so who are these dogmatic people that despite a strong will to knowledge seek to actually hurt our minds than heal them. These are the religious, the communists, the capitalists, the fascists, the racists and so on. Indeed all for whom an ideology is more important than what evidence and reason can teach us about the reality. However, to be fair, as with the foolish, even the dogmatic can have redeeming qualities in the areas that lie outside their blind spots. Um, we are all dogmatic in some areas, just as we are all foolish in some areas. The point is, how much do we strive to step outside our dark zones and how much do we seek to help others in stepping outside theirs and that is where lies our only redemption how numerous important and weighty 
are the matters and the areas in which we do succeed in keeping the levels of birth our knowledge and our will to knowledge high. Those are the people situations in which we are wise. Wise always seek. Wise always learn. Wise always unlearn. Wise always relearn. Wise always create newer and more refined, that is, more real mental representations of reality. Wise always live by evidence and reason. Wise always keep their subjective truths on a tight leash. Wise always keep away from the hubris stemming from the presumption of having arrived at the prime impossibility that is the knowledge of the absolute truth wise where no tiaras wise never lead unless there is no one else to lead wise never follow any other than the objective truth wise never presume wise never deny their ignorance wise never boast and wise never say never <laughs> on that concluding note goodbye and dear diary ps just a recap knowledge is just a reflection a collective image of the truth which is itself synonymous with reality there are uh, three levels of truth subjective objective and absolute subjective truth is nothing but our individual or groups non evidential non falsifiable belief objective truth is evidential, falsifiable and common to all human seekers of truth. Absolute truth is the real truth, the real reality, the one that is not just a mind mediated image but the real stuff. Since we have no access to non mind mediated truth we can never know what the absolute truth is. We can only surmise that it exists, for if it did not, nor would we. Also, that it is likely closer to evidence corroborated truth, that is, the objective truth, than it is likely to, to any of the myriads of subjective truths that people swear by. For more on this theme, look for another Dear Diary video by me titled Three Levels of Truth. The Noel matrix is very important in differentiating between dogmatists and knowledgeable or in other words wise and between the informed and the wise fools have neither much knowledge nor interest in it well schooled well informed career oriented knowledge seekers 
have a high level of knowledge in their chosen fields but they do not have a fundamental will to knowledge thus while they choose to get sufficiently well informed in certain areas they do not have a sufficiently broad and deep understanding of life to be considered wise or truly knowledgeable they are thus not very far off in their understanding of other aspects of reality and life from foolish people despite having great knowledge in their own vertical their opinions outside of their verticals are as meaningless as those of the foolish on the other hand dogmatic ideologues or their followers have a high will to knowledge but no matters only of their fantasies that do not really matter the only people whose opinions about life count and who can live enviable lives are the wise those who have a high will to knowledge as well as a high level of knowledge